Each day of the 7th International AIDS Society Conference on HIV Pathogenesis, Treatment, and Prevention in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, we'll be talking with Dr. Carl Diefenbach from the National Institutes of Health. Here are the highlights from day four. Dr. Diefenbach, it's a pleasure to talk to you as the International AIDS Society Conference has come to a close. During the last day, could you share some of the highlights from the talks and presentations? So today we had a series of late breaker um, talks um, on treatment advances. So there is one very significant treatment advance um, that was just reported that really talked about a, a reduction in the amount of drug required uh, uh, to protect uh, people as they um, continue with their HIV therapies. That will lead to a significant cost savings and a reduction in the side effects. That's important. Additionally, there was a, a, a report of the newer integrase inhibitor, which is a class of drugs that um, looks like it's going to be safer and easier to take. Again, making it better for patients, for providers, and also then helping us get closer to an AIDS regeneration because there'll be people able to better adhere to their antiretroviral therapy. Why, well, thank you, sir. And in several newspapers and on Twitter and blogs, there's a conversation happening about a report about two gentlemen in Boston who um, no longer have detectable virus. Can you share some information um, about what that is all about? Happy to. So these two patients have been sort of in our collective consciousness for about a year. They were first reported at the IAS meeting that was in Washington a year ago. And so over the past year, the Boston group has been studying these patients um, extensively and determined that uh, there was no detectable DNA for the virus, because remember the virus leaves a, a, a genetic footprint in the, in the body. Um, and then they have worked up the ethical framework to allow these two patients to stop therapy. Now, a month or two out, these patients have not rebounded, indicating that the, the, um, the methods that were used to evaluate them um, are agreeing with the biology of once people have stopped therapy. So this is early days on this finding. Uh, they could rebound tomorrow or they could be uh, essentially the next two functional cures. Well, thank you. And talking about a cure, you were part of a, um, a pre-conference event towards a cure. Could you share with us how you recommend we have the conversation and talk about issues related to an HIV cure? Sure, it's my pleasure. As we think about an HIV cure, we have to realize that that remains a significant aspirational goal at this point. These are very early days, and we're just beginning to find our way. If you think about the earliest days of HIV therapy development, we had periods of time where we were very depressed about the discoveries that were not coming. Mm. But eventually, through the collective work of the government, of the pharmaceutical industry, and with the, um, the help and engagement of the affected community, we were able to get to where we are with highly active antiretroviral therapy. It's going to take that type of time and effort and energy to get us to a point where we can talk about a safe, effective, and effective and durable HIV cure. So I would call it early days. Maybe we should not talk about a cure. We should talk about suppression. But I think the cure remains an aspirational goal, and I think for that reason we will continue at least to discuss it in that light. And in previous days you talked about a chronic manageable condition. Yes, yes. So that's an interesting point. Uh, we do have uh, this, this, also at this meeting, if you'll bear with me a moment, mm -hmm. we had the juxtaposition of the continued relatively um, stepwise improvement in the treatment of HIV, which really has converted um, HIV from a near-death sentence to a chronic manageable condition. But the other big session today dealt with hepatitis C, an another area that's very important to patients and providers in the United States. And there really is so much excitement about the, the new agents that are coming out for hepatitis C. And then we can talk about truly curing uh, a, a significant uh, viral disease with, with the, the new treatments. So. Well, good. And in closing, sir, are there some final comments, um, your assessment of the conference overall and the message coming out of the conference? So the message the message coming out of the conference, first, this was the first conference in Asia of for this meeting. 
And that's important. You know, fundamentally, this is um, it's a disease with a significant behavioral and social science component. We need to be able to continue to tackle stigma and deal with the affected populations in an ethical, open way and not marginalize people. Well, sir, I want to thank you for your time. I hope you have a safe um, voyage back to the U.S. This is Miguel Gomez with AIDS.gov. For more information on the conference, visit www.ias2013.org. And for more information about federal HIV programs, visit AIDS.gov.